Keto living is the life for me. Coffee, cooking, and recipes. Spending my days with my doggies. So be a sport. Set your alarm for Wednesdays for the Warden's Welcome Report. To the Warden Report. And it's a wonderful today's Wednesday. <laughs> I feel so confused on my days, but look at this. I wanted to show you all these. I'm in my office. See, I moved the table. Oh, I woke her up. She's been snoring so loud. But if you look at them, look, they're sharing the same blanket. Isn't that adorable? I mean, tough life, right? So tough having to, you know, just sleep most of your day. <laughs> so... It is, oh, it's 10.30, y'all, and I am going to uh, go make my coffee here in a minute and probably break my fast, and then because I really want some of that uh, pimento cheese. So I'll probably do that, and I'll stop in with you again. Thank y'all for tuning in. I so appreciate you. Please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because who knows what will happen this week. And I can't wait to see your comments and just get to check in with y'all again this week. So y'all have a wonderful week as well. And I'll check in later. I'm back. <laughs> so I got my coffee. Look at the little foam on that. So here is my, I've been playing around the last week or two. Normally I get heavy cream, right? Nice amount of fat and everything, and it's, it's great. And I put it in my foamer and all, and it does an okay job, and it is good. But the price has been going up. Well, I saw half and half is half the price, <laughs> like literally. But, and I know, it's a mix of milk and cream, so it's not as fatty. The carbs, according to Aldi, are the um it's one carb for two tablespoons of half and half versus one and heavy cream. And I know they're probably rounding up for the heavy cream, but it's only one tablespoon for heavy cream. So if you're into all that, like honestly, at this point, I don't really track all of my carbs. I know I'm eating whole foods and I'm good with it. Um, but I was just curious, okay, how's this going to work? Because you know, Dutch, when I order at Breve, that's with half and half because Dutch no longer has heavy cream. And I kind of understand after my experiment this last week or two, why? So in my foamer, there's like a little line and I put the heavy cream to that line, foam it up. And it, again, it is good, of course, heavy cream is delicious, but a lot of it is still kind of liquid. There's not a whole lot of foam on it. It's still still very viscous but with the half and half put in the exact same amount as i do my heavy cream so i'm not doing more doing exactly the same because i wanted to see is this going to give me the effect i want the heavy cream and when i showed you this i've already like the heavy cream was actually way higher it was about to spill over so I had to drink a whole bunch off because I couldn't even carry it and like it was on the verge of going all over my mug and there was still some in the actual foamer and I it just made so much foam I couldn't get all of it out right and, and my cup is mostly coffee and so that's my experience with half and half is it foams up awesome. So I think if you're if you're someone who likes to use a frother, the half and half, oh, I think I said it wrong, but the half and half foams up really or froths really, really well. And it probably is that little bit of milk sugar. And again, I'm doing the exact same as the heavy whipping cream. The it's just in the frother. This, I mean, it was just, the, like, it was so much, y'all. So, I could probably use less, half and half, to get the same effect. And again, I think it depends on 
what your goal is. Because I, I asked this question in our chat and many people were like, oh, but I have to use twice as much half and half to get the same effect. I think, yeah, if I'm just pouring it into my coffee, yeah, I, I would totally get why you would use heavy whipping cream. But I basically only use it for the frothing. Like, I already feel like, because I can drink my coffee black, but I typically have it with the MCT and the butter, and that's enough. And that's good enough. So to me, I just add, because I like that foamy top. I like that little bit of creaminess, but I feel like the butter gives a lot of creamy in the coffee itself. But I like the top. I like that foam on top. And I don't know, it's probably a visual thing mostly for me. But I just enjoy that, and I feel like, yeah, the half, if that's your goal, is to have that real pretty, you know, where you see that thick, um, soft, light foam on top of your cup of coffee, honestly, I feel like half and half is the way to go for that. And that makes sense with Dutch, because Dutch, their coffees, when I get it Breve, which is with half and half, it is so freaking creamy and foamy, and Lisa even pointed that out, and she was like, oh, because they're using half and half, and I'm like, oh, okay, I never knew that. I've always just used heavy whipping cream, and now that I kind of know that, I am I going to buy both? Doubtful, but I think if there was like a heavy cream shortage or, you know, um, heavy cream, you know, goes back down in price, of course I'm going to buy that, or if there's a shortage, or it's just going way too high, then I could get the half and half, and that's an easy substitute for me, for what I'm wanting with my coffee. And again, I'm not somebody who just pour the cream in, because to me, that's what the butter and the MCT is for. That gives my coffee that beautiful creaminess that I like, and that fattiness, so mine is just strictly for visual appeal and that foamy texture. So let me know what you think. And y'all that go to Dutch, do you get it Breve? Or I know Shauna, she'll bring her own butter or heavy cream. So how do you like to get your Dutch? Let me know. All right, Wednesday, I'm breaking my fast and I'm having a salad with some avocado and our pimento cheese and there's some ferbets and also some bacon and salami in there and then i just made my vinaigrette dressing and all right here is dinner y'all we just made bowls we both felt rather exhausted tonight when i got off work there was a leak under my kitchen sink i, I it's okay y'all i fixed it i youtubed how to fix it did it it was really an easy fix it just was a mess to clean up <laughs> So, what we have here is Heath smoked a pork butt yesterday, and it's been kind of chilling out all day, you know, resting, and so we've got the pulled pork. I got six ounces of pulled pork, some of that pimento cheese, some of those mini sweet peppers, some sauerkraut, pickles, and avocado, and yeah, that's just going to be dinner tonight, and I also put some hot salsa on it from H-E-B that I got for free. Happy Thursday. So I've got my coffee. It's late in the day. I've actually had a lot of coffee. It was more than 16 ounces today. It was like 17 or 18. So I just kind of split it between two cups here. And the first cup was MCT butter and some of the heavy cream I frothed up. And then the second cup is just the butter and MCT. So enjoying that today. I am fasting today. It's kind of like my last chance to fast um and then next starting tomorrow is basically my feasting and um time for the last week right so just getting in i would i call it a quick 36 hour fast right so getting that in um uh, so far going well i mean it's 36 hours for me 36 hours goes pretty quick. So I know, like some of you, uh, Laura, fast regularly. How do you feel when it comes to 36 hours? Like, I feel like that's a, it goes pretty quickly. Um, the other thing I did, y'all, sorry, my hair. I just washed my hair last night, so it's like, ooh, 
so fluffy. Look at, I mean, look at this hair. Look, it's just so, look how fluffy and, ugh. okay. So, I think, actually, last month, I had made my El Rudrai yogurt, and with that, um, I ran out of the organic milk, so I was like, well, I'll just use the whole milk. Big mistake. So, it kind of curdled it. It didn't, it, I almost dropped that. It didn't do right, and so I did best I could, right? I drained a lot of the whey off, and, you know, basically just had, um, the cultured stuff, right? It was a big flop, right? So I have held off on making any more. It just, honestly, when I'm fasting so much, it is really hard to keep up with, with some of these ferments, right? Because, you know, like last week I did a four, four and a half day fast or whatever it was. So I'm not eating that stuff during that day. And he, he will be more apt to eat the yogurt as long as we have, like, some berries to go with it. He likes that. But otherwise, you know, just not eating it. So, I haven't had any more in about a month. Finally, um, let's see, Wednesday night, I took, I had, like, just enough left of the old batch to make a new batch. So I did that and I was like crossing my fingers because I'm like, um, we'll see if this even works, right? Since the last batch was curdled, I didn't know how it would actually turn out. But I was like, well, I'm going to do it in the milk I had in the fridge. So I got it when I saw it was on sale. Well, it was uh, set to expire. The by date was the 10th. Uh, so I was like, well, I got to use it, right? So I went ahead, did that. And that was Wednesday no, that was Tuesday night, whatever 36 hours ago was. So this morning, it was done. Forgot about it, honestly, because I just went right to work. And so um, on my break earlier today, I spent it, um, you know, I, I noticed, oh, it's done. So I pulled them all out, and I checked a few of them, and they look great. So it's that nice, thick yogurt look. It's not separated. It's not all... Um, like, uh, you know, like clumpy or anything. It's like, looks like actual yogurt. So pretty happy about that. Did all that. I have enough of the organic milk left to do like four more. So I am going to do that. And I will say on this batch, because I was so concerned, I did an extra helping of the, um, prebiotic fiber that I use, and I, it's so, I forget which it is now, but anyways, it's a prebiotic fiber, and I used, uh, I put extra in there, because I was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give them lots of food, and hopefully they'll be really happy, and that seemed to work great, uh, so I'm gonna take some of that and make enough, I could do like four more bottles, there's six ounce containers, so I'm gonna do enough to get four more bottles of it and then uh from there make that and which will be perfect since I'm going into a feasting week I'll be able to enjoy that yogurt every day starting tomorrow and um then we'll see from there how I keep on it you know it's like I love my ferments right especially my kefir that's my favorite but it is a lot once you, you know, get going. Okay, you got this ferment, you got your veggie ferments, and then the El Ruderai yogurt and all of these, you know, keeping track of all of it. And then the expense, you know, melts, and especially organic milk is not a cheap thing. So then I have to adjust the budget for all that, and it's just like, whoa. So, yeah, it does get a little bit much, and sometimes I have to, like, hit a pause button because I'm like, okay, like right now, got so much freaking keeper, and it just amounts. And I'm trying to decide. Let me know, you guys. So right now, I have two quarts of active keeper going, which is a lot. What do you think? Should I take one of those quarts and just basically feed it to the dogs, right? And 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 kind of cut back. There's nobody in my area. 
that's interested in kefir grains, I have put it out before and in our Facebook group, no one cares about it, right? Um, I guess because I live in a big city, I think that's part of it. People are just like, why? I could get that from a store. Why would I want to do it myself, right? Um, I think, I feel like, and let me know, because I know all of you are spread all over the U.S. and Canada. Do you find, if you're in a rural area, do you think that more people are apt to be a do-it-yourself? So if they saw Kiefer Grades, they'd be like, oh yeah, I want that so I can do that. Versus those of us that live in metropolises, is that even right? But anyways, those that live in pretty big cities, I find I don't get as many people that want to do things themselves, right? Like I don't know many people who even have their own backyard farm. Um, I mean, we met Terry, but like in, in my subdivision and stuff, I don't know of anybody. Um, and I don't, I don't know of people who do their own ferments either locally. So I'm just curious, what are your thoughts? What is it like where you live? Is it more of, I feel like it's like a community thing. Is your community more like, hey, let's all help each other. Hey, I've got these ferments or hey, I'm sharing this. I'm just curious to see because I do feel like in at least Houston, most of us are kind of like when it comes to groceries, you go and do your own thing. Like we're not going to be all here sharing and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. That's my take on it. Let me know. I'm curious how things are like, are at where you're at. I, I did that too many, but you know what I mean? I wanted to share something else with y'all. And so let me give you a little backstory. One of my coworkers has been out since like December. Um, she had to have a surgery and then she ended up getting um, necrotizing fasciitis, which is what led me to keto because I got that five years ago. And she had that and ended up having a wound vac for like three months, all this stuff happening. And I know she's a severe diabetic, right? Because she'll post when she has to check her blood sugars and stuff. And then from there, she ended up having multiple other surgeries because of other complications that happened and all this stuff. So I feel for her because I feel like she's so young. She's in her 50s. She shouldn't be having this many health issues in your 50s, right? And I really feel for her. And so I reached out to her and I just started the conversation. Hey, I also had necro. Uh, necrotizing fasciitis five years ago and you know my doctor in there had told me the reason is because I was a diabetic and she was like yeah that's what they've told me to several times actually this wasn't her first time getting it she'd had it two other times and they keep telling her that you know she got her numbers under control this probably wouldn't keep happening or wouldn't happen as severely and then all the other issues she had. And I said, yeah, that's what happened. A doctor told me, and, I, and that um, encouraged me to, it scared me enough where I was like, okay, I don't want to be a diabetic. So I Googled how to reverse diabetes, and I found Dr. Ken Berry. And, you know, from there, I followed that, like, right away. And within three months, I reversed my diabetes. And I went from a 13.1, or maybe it was 13.6, it was 13-something, to um, now, or since then, a 5.4. I haven't had mine checked, you know, uh, this year yet, but that's what it was when I had it checked last, 5.4. So I'm hoping it, it'd be a little lower. But anyhow, and, and I said, so, you know, it's, Five years, still not a diabetic, still in reversal. I said, because, you know, I just don't want to, it, it, it scared me too much. I don't want to ever be a diabetic again. And she goes, yeah, um, they told me, you know, that it, it definitely being a diabetic is going to shorten my life. And she goes, and the I just can't get my numbers low. And the lowest I got was 6.3 while I was in the hospital, but that's a controlled environment. So I was like, well, you know, I, 
I definitely got mine reversed. And if you ever need help or want help, please reach out to me. And she said, thanks. Appreciate that. And that's where we left it. So I hope, I hope y'all, because again, I don't feel like you should ever like preach to someone. Hey, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. I just kind of go about the method of I plant a seed. And I hope if she ever watches this, if you are, please comment below. Let me know because we're there for you. You're never too late to reverse your diabetes and it is reversible for type twos. I know they're still doing research on type ones and I just feel like all of the things she suffers with this, if you could just reverse your diabetes, it would be so beneficial and it can be done. And I, I remember I told her, too, that I reversed it in three months without having to take any medications or anything to reverse it. It was just strictly by changing the food I ate. So I hope, especially since she knows and the doctors have told her, you know, if you keep on this path, you're not going to live much longer. So I hope that just me and, and dropping Dr. Barry's name... I hope she Googles and I hope this is something she decides to do for herself because I really feel for people who are diabetic and we know in America and most of the world, you just, doctors are like, well, here's more insulin, get it under control, right? We just aren't told how bad sugar is for you, right? And and they're just, most doctors are kind of like, yeah, look, just take this insulin. You can eat what you want, but, um, you know, you just need to do this. And, and we're not really educated on nutrition. We all have to be there to kind of get the word out. That's why we don't focus on weight loss here. That's why we don't do weekly weigh-ins and all that. Because weight loss could come in any form, y'all. Anybody can lose weight doing almost any diet out there, right? There are people who follow a fast, fasting method and eat whatever junk they want when they're feasting, but they just fast and they're like, so I don't gain weight or, you know, whatever it is, or I'm still losing weight because I just fasted off, right? I found some Reddit thread where people brag about fasting for 30, 40, 60 days and because they're just like, oh, I could just eat all this junk and then I just fast for a few days. And it's like, no, we have to really get the word out there. And that's what we try to focus on is let's see the health benefits. We know keto definitely reversed Heath and I's diabetes. And I know keto has definitely helped him manage his MS. And so I know being low carb, avoiding sugar, right? Let's just cut out the sugars, cut out the alcohol, cut out the inflammatory oils. You'll be so much healthier because if you cut out those things, you're getting rid of all of the packaged foods, right? You're just eating whole foods. And if we get people to do that, they'll be so much healthier. And I just want people to know diabetes is reversible. I did it. He did it. So many hundreds, if not thousands of other people have reversed their type 2 diabetes. It is possible. And we're there to help and push you through and motivate you because you can do it. There's no reason, no reason in your life to suffer that much. To constantly be in the hospital. To constantly being sick. To constantly feeling bad. You don't have to live your life like that. There is a better option. You don't need to be so sick. You can do this, y'all. We can do it together. It's, I just really feel for people when they feel like it's hopeless and it's not. And whether you're in your 50s, your 60s, even your 70s, you can make your life better. It, you don't have to suffer. And I see what help happens to diabetics in the long term. Their life is drastically not only cut short, but it's, it's not fun ending. 
it's horrible. My stepfather had to have dialysis, had to lose a foot, a toe, a leg. And she talked about how she's already lost part of her foot. Like, you don't have to do that. So please, seek help. You can manage this. You don't need all those drugs. Like, you can manage just, just with food. Just with food. And it can get there. And you don't have to suffer. And I feel like a lot of people in the world feel like that's life is suffering. And you don't have to be part of that. For five years now, I haven't suffered. I feel so much better. And I know a lot of people feel the exact same way. They feel how much better you they are. And honestly, that's what motivates us more than anything. So yeah, could I go out and have, you know, a, a donut and all these things? Yeah, I could eat whatever the freak I want to eat. But I have to take care of the old me. And that means making those choices today. So the old me is happy for today, Shelly, for making that decision. Because you don't want to end up like that. You don't want to, in 10 years, 15 years, be so sick. And i that's what is hard to when it comes to sugar. And I, I'm going to put it in there. I know some people are okay with seed oils. But I'm going to say this. This is definitely my opinion. And I'm always going to push this. If you get rid of sugar, seed oils, alcohol, you will be so much healthier. And you will not have these problems. And a lot of people I see, especially those that are kids. Like I know she's going to say, well, I have... A teenage son, he isn't going to change. Kids, teenagers, young adults in their 20s, even those in their 30s, they're like, yeah, but I sit around and I eat, you know, fast food and I buy the chips or I buy the cereal. Like, you know, I watch these um, uh, coupon channels and they'll be talking about, oh, you know, hey, you get a box of cereal this week for 49 cents. Wow, what a deal. Or get these cereal bars or all this complete and utter crap and they're like oh it's so cheap you got to stock up on it and I'm like stock up on poison I don't care that it's 49 cents for a freaking box of cereal bars that's just straight poison go you know you could go have rat poison you know it yeah you're that you're not going to feel today, but guess what? In 10 years, it's going to show up when you're constantly eating that stuff. And I think a lot of a lot of people that are teens, 20s, and 30s, they're like, I don't feel it. Hey, I, I'm not a diabetic. Oh, I get my blood work done. It, the doctors never questioned me being a diabetic. You know, my glucose, my fasting glucose is always okay. They've never said anything, and I don't feel bad right now. And they don't see the future self, the future effect of constantly eating that crap, how it builds up. It is truly a slow poison. And they don't notice that it is a slow poison until they're in the hospital suffering from necrotizing fasciitis or they have a heart attack or they have all this stuff. And people will say, oh, well... You know, I could just be part-time keto because, you know, it's okay and half the time they're eating nothing but crap. You might feel okay now, but it's going to catch up with you. Why do you want your older self when you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s suffering? If you even make it to your 80s, suffering like that. Why go through all that? Why do you have to have a wake-up call? where you're almost dying in the hospital in order for you to take control of yourself. You know right now, we know, and there's study after study, how dangerous sugar is, how bad seed oils are, how bad alcohol is. We know this. We know this. But yet, all of the young people, anyone under 40, because they don't feel it today, they think it's okay, their body's okay with it. Because they don't feel it, they ain't gaining weight, they're feeling fine. And so they think it's okay to eat that. But we know it's not. And we have to 
be there to show them that there is a healthier way and how great you can feel by eating good, healthy foods and showing that to everyone. Hey, you don't have to suffer anymore. Eat correctly. It doesn't need a magic pill. None of that. All you need is just to eat good, healthy food. Just keep to the outer aisles. Just keep to whole foods and you're fine. Shop the produce, shop the meat department, shop the dairy, and you'll be good. But you have to do that, y'all. And I just think we need more examples out there. We need more people that show who cares about weight loss. Hey, Look, this is the health benefits of keto and low carb and carnivore. Here's the health benefits. What did the health benefits do for me? Stop talking about keto, carnivore as a diet. We need to tell people this is the healthy way. Because that's honestly how the vegans and plant-based have gotten so many people. Because they don't promote veganism for weight loss. All they do is talk about how healthy it is. We need to get that voice out there. This is, we have to start it. Us, the doctors and all that aren't going to get out there. We need to get out there and say, this is the health benefit. Keto, low carb, carnivore, all of this is health benefits. You want to do this for your health and for your health. And that's where people will stop looking at this as a short term fix and looking at it for a change of lifestyle. Because I, I honestly, I get so many pop-ups in my YouTube. Oh, I did carnivore for 30 days. Here's the results. Because they're looking at weight loss and stuff. Who cares? Who cares? I, I could fast for 30 days and be like, oh, look how great it is. I fasted for 30 days and I lost this amount of weight. No. We need to get out there the health benefits. And I'm... I don't know. Sometimes I just get aggravated seeing all the things that only focus on keto, low carb, and carnivore as strictly a diet. Because when people look at it as a diet, they immediately classify it as a fad diet or a temporary solution. Instead of, we need to take the same propaganda that the vegans have and be like, this is for health. This is for health. And get that out there. Who cares about the freaking weight loss? Let's focus on health. Because you know what? It doesn't matter when you are in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. If you weigh the 120 pounds as a female, if you're constantly in the hospital and taking 10 different prescriptions a day, that ain't going to matter, right? That Okay, so she's thin. That's not what they're talking about. They're not like, oh, well, here's a... You know, a, a thin woman that's so unhealthy. It doesn't matter. So we need to get that out there. And it, it, it we have to get this into people's minds. If you want to be healthy, this is the way you do it. And get people to stop eating these inflammatory foods that is leading to so much issue, so many issues. And we see this especially as we get older. Like for women, when they're going through menopause and after menopause, that's where all this stuff really starts shining through about how healthy, of unhealthy life you might have lived prior to that. And that's how we have to push to correct this and get that word out there. Let me know uh, below what you think. Okay, y'all, we broke our rule. We went out to eat. I know, we made it nine days, right? But, look at this salmon. Doesn't that look good? It's fennel crusted salmon with a lemon beurre blanc. And then served on top of asparagus and some cherry tomatoes. And that looks so good. So excited. And then look what he got. He got also buka and asparagus. That looks good. Oh. For my lunch on this fine Friday, what I've got here is, I call it like a 
ultimate salad. So I've got, you can see salami. There's a couple slices of that pre-cooked bacon. I've got my ferments, some cheese, so a uh, sweet bell pepper I diced up, fermented carrots, uh, some calabre chilies that are fermented, some capers, salt, pepper, got my avocado here. And then on the side, this is that El Ruderai yogurt. So I'll show you that in a few. Happy Saturday. So I just got back from the market. So what I did is I took... I like this. See the little black in there? Isn't that cute? Anyway, sorry. Distracted. Uh, took Delilah. For some reason, I thought the vet didn't open till 9, and that's why I made the appointment. I'll know next time. On Saturdays, they open at 8. So, But I got to the, her vet appointment like about 10 minutes early, and I went ahead and went in, and they saw her, and we were out the door by 9.03. And that's about mm, a third, well almost half the way to the farmer's market so i went ahead and we just went to the farmer's market delilah did amazing she doesn't try to pull on the leash or anything like that in fact there was some other dogs that were like oh who's she who's she and wanted and she just like i don't have time for you yeah she's very like moody like i don't care and so she had no interest in anybody else not even people, nobody. She's just like, look, I'm just here because my mom made me, right? Like, like, kind of like that teenager, you know, your 16 year old when you're like, I want you to go with me. And they're just like, oh, I'm just here because I'm forced because I was promised I'll get, you know, a treat afterwards. That's all I'm doing. That's how, how she was. So, um, went and I'll show you in a little bit what I got, but basically they, he actually didn't have the Chinese pink celery. He said that uh, he ended up not, he said, he was like, yeah, I know I put it on the list, but I didn't actually have them, but I got a red celery, uh, the Chinese white, and the tango celery. So those three, they were $3 a bunch. So that was $9 there. The kohlrabi was a dollar each, so I got three of those. I hope that'll be enough. And then I got um, the garlic. Ugh, that was expensive, y'all. So it was five dollars. Oops, five dollars for a fourth of a pound. And I was like, well, give me two of each. There was three varieties. And that ended up being almost a half a pound. So she was like, well, you want a third one of one of these? And I said, sure. And then that was a half pound. So $10 in garlic for seven bunch, not cloves, but you know, uh, whatever that's called. But anyway, seven of those for $10. Seems a little high. So we'll see. And I've already forgotten which is which. And because she just threw them all in the bag. So I don't know which is which garlic. Uh, but it should be fun. And then, uh, they were already out of the pickling cucumbers, already out of the summer squash. And I got there like at, I don't know, 9.30, 9.45. So, and they opened technically at 9. But I know there's a lot of people who get there early. But they were already out of that. So I'm trying to think. Oh, and I did get a fennel. So I got one fennel. It's with the greens and everything. Everything came with the greens. So I have lots of greens. So I'll probably be making another pesto. He really loved the pesto. And I've got pecans now. So I could sh do that as a short maybe. Just showing quickly how I make a pesto. It's so easy. So that. And then um, I also got. Um, after that I went. And there's a booth where he has olive oils and he grows everything on his farm. He even sells his olives, but they're $15 a jar. So I did get one of those and I spent $26 just for those produce. That's how much that came to. So then, and I only brought 60 with me. So I went to the olive oil. He had a three chili olive oil and I was like, okay, that sounds really good. And I got to try it cause he'd let you sample all of them. And I tried it. I was like, okay, give me a bottle. That was 20 bucks. And then I, I looked around the goat cheese people, Dapper Goat. 
they weren't there this weekend. I looked around at a few other things, and I was like, eh, nothing else is, uh, you know, calling my name. So on the way out, we parked right near the where Layla's Bakery, Barkery, Barkery, because she makes dog treats, right? Like gourmet dog treats. And so uh, she had a little mini cupcake and had a little frosty, but she doesn't use any sugar. She, I forget, it's mostly chickpea uh, flour and peanut butter and stuff like that. And I think she uses like cream cheese, I guess, for the frosting. And so I got Delilah, since she was there with me, I got her a mini cupcake, and y'all, she was just like, what? and then finally I had to tell her a couple times, I think she was just tired or ready to go, because that was our last stop, uh, but she finally ate it, and then for Delilah and Samson, I did get a package of their donuts, and so that came to $10 for the, it was a, a package of two donuts, one little mini cupcake was 10 bucks. So, I came home, of course, after getting Dutch. So, I do have my Dutch. Ooh, sorry, y'all. Here we go. Got my Dutch here. Uh, mm, so delicious. I got Heath his double rainbow with the sugar-free rebel. And, uh... So, yeah, we're enjoying that, and I got Delilah Pup Cup, so she's really had a lot today, and the olive oil guy, he gave her a treat as well, so she's had a lot today, so I think we're good with treats for the day, and I came home, gave Heath his Dutch, which he was, like, really happy about, right, and then, uh, you know, gave them a half of a donut, right, I was like, okay, you don't need to eat, eat a whole donut, so I gave him half each and then the, we'll have the other donut maybe for tomorrow or something so yeah now i'm gonna go to actual grocery shopping at hb kroger and aldi and then i'll be on my way home and i'll show you the uh stuff i got at the farmer's market here in a bit but yeah it was fun it was nice i i think it was good for delilah to get out so when they weighed her at the vet she weighs 64.6 pounds uh so i guess that's good i don't know uh y'all seen her you know she's a black lab mix you know so i i don't know if that's too heavy but i mean i could kind of see not exactly see her ribs i can kind of see and then I see where her stomach kind of goes in so I think she's at a good weight for herself I know it's just really hard on older dogs if they're overweight so I'm trying to keep her in check right obviously today she got a bit much um but she did get to walk around a little bit and I can tell it was starting to get hot so that was good we went early and left and so, yeah, now we're home, and I'm going to go to the store, and now he, because he was like, ooh, that olive oil sounds good, he's like, get some shrimp, and we'll have the shrimp with it, so we'll see what we end up making tonight, it all sounds so good to me. All right, y'all, I'm finally home, it's almost two, so let me show you from the farmer's market. This is the kohlrabi, so I'm planning to take the greens of all of these and make a pesto because he really likes that. So I got three of these kohlrabi. They were a dollar each. Then I've got my fennel. Oh my goodness. Doesn't that look good? Look at all the fronds. That'll be awesome. And then here are the celery stalks. And as you see, look, I got a lot of greens here. So they are tall. So this is the Chinese white. This is the red. And then this is the Tango Green. Looks like regular celery. And then, let me put that there. So I got a lot to work on after a bit, after I make my lunch. And then here are $10 worth of garlic. So, I honestly don't know what is what. But it's three different kinds of garlic. There's still some dirt on them. Hey, that's how you know it's far fresh. So, uh, I'll try to figure out what is what. And, yeah, so I'm excited. So, 
I'll be, um, I'm going to make a salad right now for my lunch. I've got all kinds of stuff here, y'all. There's a lot going on. Uh, feel a little overwhelmed, but we're going to focus and get it done. And then look, I was at Aldi. Look at this cute towel. Like, you know, I, I need more towels because I only have like three drawers full of towels. But it says, you guac my world. And then the other towel is just avocados. Aren't those adorable? So hopefully these will be good towels. That's the first time I've ever bought this from <coughs> Aldi. They were $5 for the pair. <coughs> but aren't they cute? They are adorable. And here's my ultimate salad. So I've got a couple chicken tenders I picked up at Aldi. And I just put them in the air fryer for a few minutes. I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes. And then I've got those strawberries, which look amazing. Some blueberries, some mushrooms, some green beans, olives, avocados, some of my fermented sauerkrauts. Um, and then, of course, my romaine and radicchio. And that might be everything in there. Um, so, yes, that's my lunch. And then I got this. Oh, I should have brought it over here. But it's a three chili olive oil from the guy who has his own farm here so i put that all on here along with some apple cider vinegar and then on the side here uh to drink i got this brew doctor super berry um at heb they were a dollar off so it was a dollar 78 for this whole thing and then the garlics or the garlics the olives i got are garlic stuffed and i got these at aldi and so I just put a few of those on my plate and I'm ready to eat. Saturday dinner, y'all. So we took the pepper jack sausage I got on sale today. And basically a whole bunch of just veggies. So we've got green beans, the kohlrabi, some fennel, some celery, uh, mushrooms and onions. And just sauteed those, butter and seasoning for quite a while and then added the sausage seared it and then poured in uh, some marinara and then let that simmer for about 20 minutes and that's what we got and then we topped it with some grated cheese and then i got some bots and i have a half of an avocado right this sunday afternoon we finished the live and here is my lunch y'all giving you all the angles so it's a recipe i'm toying with it's basically a fennel crusted salmon and then I did take some of the fronds and kind of scattered it on top uh, but there is a crust on there kind of see that and so we'll see how that turns out and then on my salad I've got blueberries and strawberries I've got fiddle fresh uh, spring mix in there and a little bit of my ferments always got to have my ferments right so that's my lunch today Sunday dinner, we've got a nice little salad here with that strawberry vinaigrette and some avocados in there. Here's our dessert. So we've got our smoked marinara. And then here's one of those giant meatballs. Let's see how the cheese ended up. Oh, look. Oh, y'all, look at the cheese in the middle of that. Yum. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited for tonight. Happy Monday, y'all. I finished my coffee. It's almost 1.30. So I am going to start off with an avocado. One half, I have the strawberry vinaigrette. The other half is that pesto I made. And then I've also got my milk kefir here to drink. And then I'm going to have my rest of my lunch here after I finish these. And the rest of my lunch so we have the ground beef mixed with that smoked uh, marinara and then I topped it with some mots some parm and then that's just a little bit of my fennel I have so why not and then I'm gonna have some strawberries with the strawberry vinaigrette for my dessert and that's lunch today and our Monday night dinner, another bowl of that no sketty and topped it with three different kinds of cheeses, a little bit of my fennel and that pesto. And then on the side, this is it all for me. Heath and I are splitting our stuffies and it's cream cheese stuffed jalapenos and mushrooms. 
happy Tuesday and look who's come here get a camera <laughs> he's having a day oh I've been just a little, a little behind today so they went out a little more later than normal and look who else is joining us Delilah hey baby <laughs> Aw, um, he is off today and he's not home and uh, basically I think he left shortly after I went to work so uh, he's been gone and I guess they, you know, the house is like really quiet and everything so I guess they're just kind of like, well, come on, now we got up and everything. So took them out, made my coffee. Now my husband is supposed to also go get us some Dutch today so Still waiting on that. I know he's busy running around, but it'll get here. Until then, I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee. So I hope everyone is having a great day, and I'll chat with you in a little bit. On this Tuesday lunch, I'm having a sweet potato with lots of butter, a little bit of brown swerve, and nuts or pecans, uh, some bacon, some cheese, olives, avocado, and uh, afterwards, I'm going to try to drink as much of this uh, kefir that I can. I don't know if I'll get through the whole court. <laughs> hey, thought I would check in. I'm listening to a really good interview um, with Cynthia Thurlow and Dr. Colleen Cutcliffe. So go look that up on YouTube, y'all. Especially if you are someone who says, oh, I can't eat x vegetable because i get bloating or i get gas or i have aches and pains i have found over the past year that the gut microbiome has a lot to do with that i see it and yeah there was a point a year ago i couldn't eat brussels and cruciferous vegetables because i would instantly gain weight and i would be bloated then on my journey to gut health, I now can eat those vegetables and every vegetable without having issues. I'm not getting bloated. I'm not drastically gaining weight overnight showing inflammation or anything. That isn't happening anymore because I have slowly and consistently been improving my gut biome. And this is a really good discussion because I have heard some of you say, no, I have to be carnivore because I have this or that. And what they're talking about is how those and there's other things are signs that your gut biome is out of whack. And we know, like I know, since I was a little kid, I've been on antibiotics a lot throughout my life. And every time you are... It decimates your microbiome. So it's not a fault of yourself, right? And this is something important in really going over how fiber is important in our life. And I know that there are some people out there that will say, oh, you don't need fiber. You don't need, you just eat carnivore forever. And that's all you need. But my thing is, I mean, if you want to do that because you enjoy that and you, you know, hey, if you get a little seasoning or something on the side, it doesn't mess with you, go ahead, continue that way. But if your reasoning for not eating any vegetables is because you are getting some kind of pain, some kind of inflammation, I really want you to try to work on your gut biome, to fix your gut, because it isn't just, oh, you can't have vegetables. The, the more we're learning about the microbiome, the more important it is to have a very healthy and diverse gut bacteria. And then that way, you don't have to be so very restrictive. And sometimes I feel like in the keto, and especially the carnivore space, too many people are being so restrictive for either they feel like, oh, this is all I can eat, or they feel like this is what I have to do for health. And I'm going to tell you, no, like I don't think any whole foods out there are essentially bad. Like veggies, 
I think most of them are good in moderation and <coughs> are needed for <coughs> our gut microbiome and our overall health. And I think as time goes by, as we learn more and more about the microbiome in our gut, we're going to learn how important it is to have that diversity, to have fibers, to have whole foods of a variety of nature in our bodies and that it's okay. It's, it's overall, that's going to be what is best for us in the end, my opinion. So I would venture to say, if you are one of those that are just, your thing is I have to be carnivore because of veggies make me sick or this happens to me otherwise, check your gut biome. Do what you can to work on getting your gut bacteria in a healthy, flourishing place. And that's a great a YouTube video to listen to, again, with Cynthia Thurlow and Dr. Colleen Cutcliffe. They just released it Tuesday, um, so go find it, watch it. It's an hour long. I know that might be kind of lengthy. I think most of you like longer ones, but there's a lot of vital information in there, and you could see I have slowly increased my uh, fermented foods and fibrous foods over the past year. So don't feel like, like you saw earlier, drinking a quart of kefir. Don't feel like that's where you should start. And in fact, I would say, do not start there. Um, when it comes to making your gut healthy again, it's slow and steady re wins the race. Not, oh, more is better attitude. It's not, believe me. Uh, otherwise, you'll have disaster pants, and none of us want that, believe me. So you start slow, and I mean really slow. It could be you get, like when I first bought kefir, I was only doing like a fourth of a cup a day, something that small. Or if you're going to go with some really good fermented kimchi, fermented sauerkraut, and make sure this is the stuff that's in the refrigerated section. If you're getting it in the middle aisles, guess what? That's all been killed off. Don't, don't buy the shelf-stable ferments. Get it from the refrigerated section, and it should say, you know, live bacteria in there, or do your own. But you start off small. One tablespoon. That's it. All day. I'm not saying throughout the day. One meal a day, put in one tablespoon of sauerkraut, one tablespoon of kimchi, one tablespoon to start, and just do that each day, and you'll slowly build that. And even if you are carnivore and you want to then improve your gut, start with just a tablespoon of the ferments and then slowly over time, try with a little bit of vegetable. Try Start with something that generally is easier to digest for most people, but do this after you've started incorporating fermented foods on a daily basis so that then what you're doing is you're going to feed those healthy bacteria you just started. You're going to feed those bacteria with those veggies. You're just think of it that way. You're not eating the veggies like for yourself per se. You're eating it to make your gut bacteria happy, y'all. That's what it's for. So when I have a sweet potato or when I have um, tried the avocado, olives, jalapenos, uh, cauliflower, Brussels, I mean, a salad, all of that, it's really because I'm like, I want my gut bacteria to flourish. I want them to be happy and healthy, and so they need food, and that's why I eat those things. So that would be my suggestion. Start there and go from there. Now, of course, if you're like, no, I only want to be carnivore. That's all I ever want to be. Go ahead. If, if that's your choice, but I think a lot of us really want optimum health. And that's what I'm going for is my optimum health long term. And so, you know, that does mean, hey, I think this is a healthy way of doing it because I really want my gut to be healthy. And if your gut's healthy, 
the rest of you will be healthy. So this is what I'm doing, and I'd love for you to join along and get started with that. And Tuesday night's dinner. So I got those green beets cheap, and he got some tomatoes today, so kind of did um, a braise of the green beets and tomatoes, and then added the sausages. And then we also made this, or we're just playing around with what's known as disco fries. So it's crinkle cut. We did our sweet potato fries and then brown gravy. And then we did, because we had it, the Easy Melt cheese. So shout out if you have ever lived or been to New Jersey and had disco fries. Comment below and let me know and what were your thoughts because this is something we might do on a Friday night if we could get it just right. All right, y'all. I'm sorry it's a little dark. Um, we just finished dinner. We're watching a new show. We finished Ted Lasso. And I have to say, I'm missing all of those people. That was a really, really good show. So let me know what show. Look at that. A nice um, comedy, feel-good comedy. What do you like? Let me know below, and I hope you give this video a thumbs up, and please stay tuned to see all of our wonderful channel members. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for your support, and look forward to this month's cook-along. I haven't finalized the date yet or the recipe, but just be on that lookout for that. I will make announcements ahead of time. And then stay tuned to watch this next video, y'all. It really helps us if after the Warden Report, you click the video that pops up on the screen right about here and just watch the next one. And if you do that on that video, comment um, the Warden, and then I'll know who followed through and watched the next video. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. I think there's something on my team. There, I got it. Have a wonderful week, y'all, and we'll see you on the Friday Night Feast.